Welcome to Watchmen on the Wall, a daily outreach of Southwest Radio Ministries and SWRC.com. Today, our host, Dr. Larry Spargimino, will visit with cancer survivor Lynette Hill, and we'll hear about how God delivered her from this horrible disease. Historically, summertime giving is always slow here at SWRC, but this year, giving is at a critical level. Friends, we continue to need your help. Thank you to everyone who has been responding with gifts for the ministry. Unfortunately, we're having to further cut expenses, and we need to hear from you. Please, continue to pray for Southwest Radio Ministries. Ask the Lord to provide the needed funds so that we can continue to proclaim the good news that God is still on the throne and prayer changes things. And as you're led, please consider giving a gift to our summer relief effort. Your one-time and monthly gifts are needed. You can give when you call 1-800-652-1144. That's 1-800-652-1144. You can also give at our website, swrc.com. Thank you, friends, for your prayers and continued financial support. Now, here's our host, Dr. Larry Spargimino, with today's guest. Lynette Hill is our guest. She has written a very hopeful and helpful book titled Overcoming Cancer, From Despair and Desperation to Hope, Life, and a Newfound Mission. Our guest had stage 4 cancer. The MRI imaging showed all these terrible black areas throughout her body, but she's here to tell us all about it. Lynette, thank you so much for, for being with us. Larry, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity. How did you know that you had cancer? What kind of warned you? I mean, what kind of symptoms? Well, that's a great question. So I was healthy pretty much my whole life. I had been in the hospital five times to have my five amazing boys. Never had any comorbidities, was not in and out of the hospital. And then about two, three weeks leading up to my diagnosis, I couldn't go to the bathroom. And I said, what is going on? And one of my children who I fostered, I did foster care for 10 years for teenage boys. One of them became a nurse. And I called him and I said, Victor, I I can't go to the bathroom. And I said, that's not like me. He goes, oh, mom, when you get older, sometimes you get impacted. Go to Walgreens, pick this up and you'll be okay. And I did. And it flushed me out. A couple days later, I couldn't go to the bathroom. So I knew something was wrong. And I went to urgent care Fast forward, when I got my diagnosis of cancer and stage four, it had metastasized through my body, and I had a 12-centimeter mass sitting on my ovaries that had grown enough to push against my colon, and it wasn't allowing me to go to the bathroom. And that was my symptom. You know a lot about chemotherapy. What does chemotherapy do? So chemotherapy, interesting, is actually listed on the CDC as a carcinogenic, so it's actually poison. And what they do is they take poison to kill the bad cells because they're trying to kill those cancer cells that have just went malignant. And the crazy thing about chemotherapy, in doing so, it's also killing your good cells. So that's where all the side effects come in, that's where all the, your body is just trying to save its life but it's got this poison going through it. And for me, when I had chemo, everybody's different. Every journey is different. But for me, because my body had not known medication, that harsh chemo just sent me down into a spiral. I had every side effect you could possibly imagine. Now that you're healed, and we'll talk a little bit about your therapy, but what are your doctors saying? What does Big Pharma say about all of this? What does the AMA say about all of this? It's interesting because my doctors, when I first got diagnosed, I didn't want to ask that question, that elephant in the room of how much (laughs) time do I have? So my husband asked that question, and they said, well, we don't want to talk about that right now. Let's just kind of see what we could do to give her a quality of life. But they did tell me that my scans are not the scans of someone that lives because it had already metastasized and it was in my bones. So my sister is also a registered nurse, and she has a very good friend that works in oncology. And when she sent her my scans, she told my sister, keep your sister comfortable because she doesn't have very much time. 
And so when I did the chemotherapy and decided at the height of my illness, and this is not giving anyone any, any medical advice whatsoever, yes. it's just telling people what I did for myself, I decided because chemo was not working for me, it ended me in the hospital with my organs shutting down because my blood pressure was 60 over 40, and I knew I had to do something or my husband was going to bury me. Right. So I decided to stop everything and go with natural medicine, and within six months, my 12-centimeter mass was gone, and within six months after that, I was completely cancer-free, and my oncologist just had no words. She just could not believe it. She was happy for me, but she was also just in amazement. And when I finally confessed to her that I had stopped everything, she couldn't believe it. So then she ordered another scan for me just to do another scan to make sure. And when it came back, still no more cancer. She says, well, that you made the best decision for you. You give an important warning. You write that so-called healthy natural produce is sometimes laden with growth enhancers, herbicides, and pesticides. And I would add, I do believe that there is more and more GMO food getting into our diets than we can ever imagine. And nobody knows what the long-term effects of that will be. Exactly. Yes. I'm glad you brought that up because my family asked me, they said, how did you even get sick? You were so healthy. You were a vegetarian. I mean, I ate uh, fish once in a while, but I ate basically a plant-based diet. But what I didn't realize is when I was going to the grocery store thinking I was doing the right thing, buying my fruits and vegetables, I was not buying organic. So for 25, 30 years, I was eating pesticide-laden fruits and vegetables. And, you know, there's other environmental factors of why people come up with cancers or stress levels. But that had, for me, a lot to do with it, I believe. So now I only buy organic. And I'm fortunate enough to live in California in the San Joaquin Valley where it's so much agriculture. So there's a lot of farmer's markets around here. So now I just buy, make sure I buy good organic food. I know there are so many parts of your book that were just eye-openers. In fact, you talk about tea. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but you talk about tea bags. You know, we think that tea bags are pretty, I guess, neutral, harmless, but tea bags, right. even with good tea inside, but when what's in the tea bag leaches out into the tea, it could be harmful. Right. So tell us about that. I mean, you really have to be careful in so many ways. Yeah, and you have to be careful where you're sourcing your products from, and you just You never really know, so you have to do the best that you can, but try and go to companies that you know ethically source their products because, like you said, the tea inside the bag could be great, but if the tea bags have little heavy metals in it or it's toxic or that kind of thing, depending on where they package it and how they package it, you're right. It's leaching right into your tea, and you think you're drinking great tea, but you're drinking the other things that come with it as well. Well, friends, our guest is Lynette Hill. We are offering her book, Overcoming Cancer. It is a personal testimony of her journey. Our toll-free number is 1-800-652-1144. The book affirms that she is not a medical doctor and is making no medical claim. But Lynette Hill did overcome cancer, and in her book, she writes about that. As a matter of fact, in Appendix A, she gives her personal regimen, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but our toll-free number, 1-800-652-1144, the title of the book, Overcoming Cancer by Lynette Hill, who is our guest. Lynette, tell us a little bit about your personal regimen, and what, what are some of the things that have worked so marvelously and wonderfully, and you're actually a living testimony to that. So tell us about that. So when I decided to stop all treatment and just go with natural medicines, I actually was home at the time from the hospital from my 60 over 40 organ shutting down thing that happened to me. And when I came home, I was in a wheelchair. My husband's changing my diapers. It was a horrible thing. And I just said to myself, you know, we cannot heal this way. There has to be a better way to heal. And so I said to God, I'm going to look into other things. So I literally started doing a lot of research. 
And what made me really sad, Larry, is that there are so many things out there that can help heal our bodies, but we're not told. And people are dying. And it made me really sad because we could possibly save someone's mom, sister, friend. And so when I decided on the things that I felt God was leading me to, as I said, there were so many things. Once I decided on those three things of the soursop tea, the apricot kernels, the black seed oil, I went to our very own NIH website and put those information in. And I was surprised to find that testing has actually been done on those things. They are known to kill cancer cells. They are known for anti-inflammatory, antioxidants, so many things. But we aren't told about it, and yet we're dying. So at the height of my illness, I said to God, I'm going to go with the things that you created on this earth for our bodies when you created us, because you created everything we needed. He said the leaves of the trees are for the healing of the nation. I created every herb for the benefit of man. And I told God, either you heal me with the things that you made on this earth, or you take me home. Because I'm not doing this. I'm not putting my family through this anymore. And God honored my faith. Faith without works is dead. And I decided to trust God's medicine. I think we can agree that God still heals miraculously and directly. But if God chooses to, to use holistic health techniques and restorative therapy, who can argue with God? I mean, that you have found this and that it's worked so well for you and for so many others, I think the Lord's yeah. involved in this. And, and by the way, Joe Horn, Tom Horn's son, writes about this. How, how did you get to know Joe? I'm glad you asked that because when I decided, when I was given my cancer-free diagnosis, and I'm walking out of my oncologist's office, and I'm looking at all of the people that look like me that are in a wheelchair, that are, their hair is gone. They look just like I did. And I couldn't tell them about it. The doctor can't tell her about it because they're under that pharmaceutical umbrella. I walked out of that hospital so broken, and I said to God, I said, your medicines is out there. It can help people. I said, I want to share what you did for me. This is now your journey. This is no longer my journey. And so I posted my personal journey of this on YouTube. They immediately took it down. And so someone says, well, put it on TikTok. They don't censor as much. So I put it on TikTok, got up in the morning. It was over a million views. Someone on Twitter, a large account, shared my story on their page and Joe Horn happened to see that story. Wow. So then he went to TikTok to look at my other videos to vet who I was. And then he sent me a message. And, of course, he wanted proof of what I was saying because we know how the Internet is. Yes. And so I sent him copies of my scans, doctor's reports, and he said to me, your story needs to be told for someone to stop their treatment at the height of their illness, not knowing if they were going to live or die, he said, your story needs to be told. And that's how I met him. Well, it's amazing. You said that in a real sense, this is the best thing that ever happened. In fact, you have a ministry, you have a mission, you have a purpose and direction in life, and you're helping so many people. So God has really blessed you. I mean, you have suffered a lot, but through the suffering, you've overcome that. You've been very yeah. diligent and steady. So I think you're a wonderful example for men and women. Thank you so much. And if I could add to that, Larry, real quick about what you're saying about it was one of the best things that ever happened to me. Yes. Your listeners are probably thinking, she must be crazy. Why is she saying that? I've always been someone that's very grateful. But this journey, and I hope I don't cry, um, this journey has honestly given me a new set of eyes. I see everything different. Everything is heightened for me. Yes. The birds singing, everything is different. And one of the things that we talk about all the time is being kind. And we have no idea what that means as far as how important it is. Because when my husband was changing my diapers and he would go to the hardware store to pick up things to just try to keep his mind busy, no one in that line knew, Larry, that that man had just got through changing his wife's diapers and was trying to rush home because he didn't know when he walked in the house if his sons were going to say, Mom passed away while you were gone. So just being kind to people, we have no idea how that will affect their day. Just say hello. Just make eye contact. And 
ask someone how they're doing and really wait for them to answer. It is just so important. So for me, this is one of the best things that's ever happened to me because I have a whole new sense of purpose and a whole new set of eyes. I've become, and I think I'm not the only one, but with the Biden vaccine mandates and all the bad negative reports with Pfizer and so on and so forth, and then how big pharma is just getting rich over the suffering of people, it's very shocking. I think a lot of Americans think, well, golly, if you can't trust your doctor, who can you trust? But wherever there's money, and a lot of money to be made, people are going to take advantage of other people. I think one one of the good things that's happened with the COVID vaccines is there's so much medical evidence and medical proof that they're bad. They're really not vaccines, they're gene therapy. And hey, that doesn't sound good. No, and that was part of the marketing, you know, to call it a vaccine so people would think it was safe but it's really an emergency use authorization research Mm -hmm. drug. It is not a vaccine. And it's interesting because my doctor said to me, because I had cancer during the height of COVID, she says, Lynette, all my patients, I'm telling them to get the COVID vaccine. Because your immune system is so low, if you get COVID while you're fighting cancer, it's not going to be good for you. And I said to her, doctor, with all due respect, my body's already fighting something foreign And I'm not going to put something else foreign into it for it to fight. So I'm opting out. Mm -hmm. And I did not take it. And a lot of the people that did, while they're fighting cancer, are not here. And it's just exactly what you said. It's money. It's just, and it breaks my heart. Because if I were to pass away and my husband had to bury me, the pharmaceutical company is going to move on. The hospital is going to move on. But someone's lost their mom. Someone's lost their sister, their friend. So it's so important for us to advocate for our own health because it's our health at the end of the day. Well, you know quite well that the World Health Organization, the WHO, has been trying to take over our health care. And I believe that President Biden has been pushing this. It's a terrible thing. I can't imagine how Americans could ever go along with this. And I think one of the reasons why they hate Donald Trump so much because he publicly said, in September of 2018, that he's against globalism and that America will be run by Americans. Hallelujah. And I think there are some people who hate that idea. Which surprises me because that's the way it should be. We should have control over our own health, our own children, and the government should have a little role in our lives, not as much as they do. It's crazy to me. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we only have a, a few minutes, but tell us about your personal regimen, soursop leaves, apricot kernels, and so forth, and I'm sure people are really interested in that. And of course, the best thing is to get your book. Yes, the best thing is to get my book, but if, even if they go to my website, which is www.speakerlinette.com, it has videos on there. It has a frequently asked questions from me where I tell them exactly what I did, how I did it, how I make the soursop, when I you know, eat my apricot kernel. But the other important thing I'd like to add, Larry, is not just taking God's medicine is not enough. We have to believe for our healing because it starts in the mind first. We could take all the medicines we want, natural medicines, we could eat healthy, but if we don't believe that God can heal us, it will not happen. We must believe in God's promises of healing and we have to make sure we eat healthy. We can't take God's medicine and go to McDonald's drive through every day. We have to understand that our body is a temple and that we have to treat it well. So if they go to speakthelinette.com, there's a lot of videos. There's my book. There's your, the book on your site as well. And there's also a prayer request. So if people want me to pray for them, I love praying for people, and I want them to keep me posted on their journey because I know that healing is possible with God. Amen. I'm looking at what's part of your regimen in the evening. And lastly, you say, make sure to get eight full, uninterrupted hours of sleep every night. That is so important. Absolutely. And I think there are so many people Absolutely. Yeah, today with all the problems, with all the controversy in, in government and transgenderism and all this madness, I think people need to, to get a good night's sleep. What do you recommend? 
the neat thing about the sour shop tea is it has sleeping agents in it. People oh. in the islands have been drinking it just for that. So it makes you sleepy. So it will give you a good night's sleep. And one of the reasons you want a good night's sleep is because that's when your body rests. And yeah. our body heals when it's at rest. Right. Your liver also detox everything that you've done during that day. And so when you get up in the morning after a full night's sleep, your body should want to eliminate what your liver has went through. So it's so important to get a full night's sleep. And you're going to notice you feel so much better. And intermittent fasting is so important. So if you could stop eating after 7 or 8 o'clock so when you go to bed you're not full, and that helps your body sleep better too. And put your electronics away. Put your phone away. (laughs) Make sure your mind is in a quiet place to just go to sleep. And talk to God at the end of the day. That always helps. Well, Annette, I want to thank you for your book, your testimony in this interview, and I know you have a great big growing ministry. You're helping many people. God bless you. What a delight to talk to you. Thank you for having me, Larry, and thank you to your listeners. Lynette Hill's inspiring book, Overcoming Cancer, is in today's resource spotlight. In the year 2021, Lynette Hill was diagnosed with cancer. Her scans were not the scans of a person who lives, according to the medical specialist, but God had other plans. Overcoming Cancer is the account of her journey into the world of cancer, a true story that tested her strength in unimaginable and countless ways in seeing Christ and the world through different eyes. It all begins with horrific news, but it ends in the true modern miracle brought about through prayer, natural healing remedies, sacrificing bad habits on the altar before God, and above all, a strict faith in God's healing power. Order Overcoming Cancer by Lynette Hill today and be encouraged. Call 1-800-652-1144. That's 1-800-652-1144. You can also order on our website, swrc.com. Lynette is now a living testimony of God's grace and mercy as well as the natural medicines he placed upon the soil of this earth to heal his people. Overcoming Cancer. 1-800-652-1144. Larry Stamm, teacher and host of the brand new television series, Pilgrimage to Zion, is here with some encouragement on sharing our faith with family and friends. Shalom, friends. Larry Stamm here. So glad you are joining us as we continue this teaching series, Serving in His Court. Biblical Principles for Personal Evangelism from the Heart of a Coach. In our last lesson, we were talking about divine resources at our handy as we seek to fulfill the Great Commission in regards to personal evangelism. Last time we spoke about those divine resources, I introduced them to you briefly. They include God's Word, the Gospel message itself, the Holy Spirit, and prayer. We talked briefly about the parable of the sower. We briefly unpacked the word. In this lesson, we are going to talk about the gospel message itself. The gospel message itself. If you have a Bible, I encourage you to turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to read verses 3 and 4 to review the foundation of the gospel message The Apostle Paul, writing to the church in Corinth, wrote these words in verses 3 and 4 in 1 Corinthians 15. Paul wrote, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That is the foundation of the gospel message. Amidst the myriad of messages that you and I are daily bombarded with, there is one message that saves, the most important message in the world, namely the gospel message. We have it. A dead and dying world needs to hear this message. Alvin Reed, Bible commentator, notes regarding the gospel message these words. He wrote, The gospel is not so much an idea or a thing as it is the announcement of a person, 
We believe Jesus Christ as the embodiment of the good news from God to man. In Mark chapter 1, verse 1, Mark begins his gospel account with these words, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Note also that several New Testament writers in several places refer to proclaiming or preaching the gospel. For example, the Apostle Paul wrote in Colossians 1.28, he wrote, We proclaim him. And in Colossae and in Galatians chapter 1, verse 16, the Apostle Paul mentions his calling to, quote, preach him among the Gentiles. So Paul's calling was to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as witnesses for Jesus, as we desire to share the good news with others, that is our calling as well. We are called to proclaim him. We are called to preach him among those in our specific spheres of influence. So what is the gospel all about? Well, it's all about Jesus. First of all, Jesus is God. In John chapter 1, verse 1, we note these words. John 1, 1, the word says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. I also want to read to you Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, we're going to be looking at verses 13 and 14. Titus chapter 2, verses 13 and 14, the Word of God says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, And until next time, friends, the Lord richly bless you and keep you. Shalom. It all begins with horrific news, but it ends in the true modern miracle brought about through prayer, natural healing remedies, sacrificing bad habits on the altar before God, and above all, a strict faith in God's healing power. I'm talking about the book Overcoming Cancer by Lynette Hill. This book tells Lynette's amazing story, and it will be an encouragement to you. Order Overcoming Cancer by Lynette Hill today when you call 1-800-652-1144. Lynette is now a living testimony of God's grace and mercy, as well as the natural medicines he placed upon the soil of this earth to heal his people. Overcoming Cancer. Tomorrow, author Tyler Gilrith will take us to the Gate of the Gods, Be sure to tune in on your favorite radio station by downloading our SWRC mobile app or by subscribing to our daily Watchman on the Wall podcast. Watchman on the Wall is a production of Southwest Radio Ministries and is supported by faithful listeners like you. Visit SWRC.com.